The world will hate you. You will suffer. He says, so I want to ask everyone in this room, if you're truly following Christ, where is your scar? And when he said that, the dam broke. And I sobbed and sobbed in that church. And that was when I grew up. Really, that was when I matured. That's when I became an actual grown-up, was at that moment. And I said, you know what? From this point forward, I'm not going to hide it. I'm not going to be ashamed. And if they want to turn their backs on me and invite me and not consider me credible, then let them do it. And the cool part, never again did any of those things ever happen. Not even once. Never. Never. It attacks you when you're weak. It attacks you when you're weak, not when you're strong. If you're strong in your faith, you won't be attacked. If you're weak in your faith and you're mamby and you're worried, it'll zone right in, get you there. All right, we have time for probably just two or three more questions. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask your advice for school teachers. Um, what kind of message can school teachers give to their students who might not have a biblical background or a Christian upbringing? Um, where this concept would be really foreign to them. What kind of advice can school teachers give their kids? Public? Uh, Government school? Yeah, like a public school, like Austin ISD school teacher. Oh, that's tough, isn't it? Um, you know, I'd really like to see some activist here in Texas actually say, well, we've got programs to educate people about multiculturalism and about you know, how we have to be tolerant, respectful of Buddhists and, and, and Hindus. We actually need a little bit of curriculum that says, here's what the Christian faith is all about. Here's what Christian people believe. And you can do that in a way that's objective. Christian people believe this, 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 and this. And then at least they heard it. Yes, sir. Well, my name is Ronnie, and I Hi, Ronnie. met you a long, long time ago. Thanks for I coming. I really love you, and Thank we you. all love you, and we're all, all proud of you and your courageous stand up to the cancer industry. And I just wanted to throw out an idea. As someone who's also uh, dealt with the medical industry, and, and uh, I'm in ongoing recovery from a traumatic brain injury, and part of what's helped me is, and, and it's actually been proved now, that it actually cures cancer, and that is um, fine tetrahydrocannabinol oil. Mm -hmm. yeah. I and, feel like you're going to say that. So, um, have, how many people here have heard my anti-marijuana spiel? Not many. Oh, yeah. I ought to do that more often. <laughs> so uh, I'm the mark of the beast person, but I'm also the microchip lady. And so every person in the country and around the world who hears voices contacts me because they all think they have a microchip. And so when I talk to these people, I used to talk to them all on the phone because I thought maybe there's some underground program I need to know about. So I would talk to them. And after I would talk to them, I would have this really creepy feeling, like really creepy and it was the kind of creepy feeling like I wanted to take a shower inside, but I couldn't. And I began to realize that those people were not talking about real implants. They were talking about something else. And that something else was very disturbing. This hearing of voices, this sense of something else inside of you, something pursuing you, hearing you, talking to you in your head. This, the, what, what the medical you know, you know, psychologists will call it schizophrenia. And the Bible calls it demon possession. So I began to ask a question of all these people who would contact me. And I'm talking, by this point, probably over a thousand people have contacted me. A lot of people. I talk to these people all the time. And I, I began to, as I heard their stories, they all had one precipitating in incident that happened before they started hearing the voices. And they were either, number one, dabbling in the occult, right? And that's what we saw Charles Babbage did, went up there and summoned the devil. Right? So dabbling in the occult, that could be tarot cards, tarot cards, that can be astrology, that can be going to a fortune teller, that can be something as simple as you're just at a weekend renaissance fair and you sit down and have somebody read your palm. All of those things are portals into darkness. And I know this because I've spoken to people who experienced it. Uh, so that's one, dabbling in the occult, Ouija board, all of that stuff. Don't do it. It's really evil. And then the, the second thing is dabbling in mind-altering substances. So marijuana, uh, we know that when teenagers smoke marijuana, they're six times more likely to become schizophrenic and begin hearing voices than those who do not smoke pot. Um, I have a friend who is a Cherokee, doesn't share my religious views at all, but she said, you know, we Cherokee think it's really freaky that, that you white people are stupid enough to sit in your apartments and smoke pot and do drop LSD and do these things. Because in our culture, we know that when you leave the body, you've got to have a shaman there with you. Because we know that when you leave the body and you go out to the spirit world, when you come back, things will attach to you. And when you go back in your body, they'll go right in there with you. 
And that's why we have the shaman who sits there and watches over you. So this idea that we can just leave our bodies and dabble around, I actually believe there's a book I have called What the Dormouse Said. And it's about uh, the, the interconnection between hallucinogenic drugs and the development of the computer industry and the web. And all of this stuff, it's all interconnected. So it's no mistake in my mind that Steve Jobs was messing around with hallucinogens before he developed all of the brilliant stuff he developed with the apple, with the bite out of it. Um, let me just finish the other, the other four. So there's four things that seem to accompany the hearing of voices. Um, the next one is, oh, and by the way, that leaving your body, sometimes it's, it's surgery. It's actually anesthesia. People leave their bodies and then they come back. And they believe that their doctor put something in them when they were under, because when they wake up, they're not alone anymore in their heads. So I always pray. I've had a lot of surgery lately. A lot of surgery. I've been under many times. And I always pray really, really hard before I go under. You know, Lord, be with me. <laughs> Protect me wherever I'm going. Yeah. Um, the other things that lead to this sort of hearing of voices, uh, violent trauma, especially childhood abuse, or war, seeing lots of bloodshed, violent trauma. Um, i trying to think what the fourth one is. It flew out of my head, but um, that's enough. So, yes, I know you're going to tell me that's ridiculous and I don't want to hear it. It may cure cancer, but I, I wouldn't want to take that risk personally to do it. I've smoked pot. You know, hey, I, I grew up in the 70s. You know, I lived in L.A. I, it's not like I, I've never experienced it. I certainly know what it's all about. But it's not something now, knowing what I know, that I would ever do again. Yes, ma'am. Um, this just kind of brought up an interesting point to me. I'm a mental health counselor, so I have a lot of people who are dealing with... Um, mind-altering medications and medications for mental illnesses. Um, so that was kind of maybe one of the four that I thought I'd add in there because I think that kind of brings some things in too. Well, I mean, mental illness is interesting because usually the mental illness is tied into one of those things. I think the mental illness is the outcome, um, not the cause. Okay. So then my second question was, like, I've been hearing stuff about how they're going to implant chips into medication. And I'm not sure if I heard they are talking about that. Yeah, they're doing that. Um, it, it wouldn't really, I, they've got pills that you can take, and then the sensor tracks it through your body to see if you've actually taken your pill, and then the sensor sends a signal through the Wi-Fi to your doctor. It's all coming. That's, that's here. That's really scary. Yeah, it is. It yeah. is. And, you know, medicine cabinets that will know when you take the aspirin off and can weigh the aspirin, or, or every tag, every aspirin has a tag, and they can tell when there's two missing, and know that you took it. Yeah. I just uh, I had one more to add to your list was uh, actual uh, political activism. If you do your research, something for you to check on since you had a lot of calls, people talking about voices, is uh, yeah, something called Park. Yeah, that's Nick Beckage's work. He's going to be on Coast to Coast now, by the way, talking about Park. Nick, Nick Beckage. There's know. documentation, many people can yeah. check yeah, I, you know, it's possible to do remote voice stuff, but the, the things that people describe really are, I, I believe, of a more spiritual nature. You're going to see this a lot more in the culture, too, because uh, Stephanie Meyer's new movie, she's the one who did Twilight, romanticizing, converting yourself into evil. <laughs> that's, what, that's what vampires are. Um, but she's got a new movie out that romanticizes being possessed. Um, the Host. It's called The Host, and, and it's all about, it's it's the number one, it was the number one best-selling novel among girls ages 12 to 17. Wow. And it's, it romanticizes having another entity possess you, inside of you, and uh, the war that goes on between you and the other entity. Wow. Uh, let's see, question in the back. Oh, wait, 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 we got two people asking. Uh, gentleman Sandy, go ahead. Yeah, the people are hear voices. Are they saying anything like, um, they're reunited today? Yeah, well, I, typically when, when people hear voices, they want to understand why. And they'll oftentimes think that it was uh, the government, an ex-boyfriend, an ex-employer that implanted something in them. Um, but, you know, you can go back and you can find that this hearing of voices happened in the 1800s, the 1700s, the 1600s. This has always been happening. And at different periods in time, people attributed to different things. So in the 1600s, it was because somebody put a cell in you. Okay, I think we ever told you though that they hmm. can deny access to today's technology and victimize with it. No, I haven't heard that. That's a new one on me, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm I'm having a hard hard time hearing you.
Yeah, I'm, I'm, if, if you want to come forward and ask your question. Yeah, I just can't hear you, so let me take another one while we're, while we're waiting. And I know it's getting hot, people are getting tired, so I don't want to keep you too long, but I also want to make sure that we get to everybody's questions. So this is San Antonio? No, it was in Honolulu with that friend. Okay. And then I had met his father before. And it, it, it's like everybody that rises, they have a relationship with other people that want to come to San Antonio. They have a relationship with what? With other people within the same city. <coughs> That's probably outside of my realm just a little bit because I'm more in the technology arena than the political piece. You'll notice I don't talk much politics on my show because it's not really my thing. But I, I know that there are people who are looking into that. Yes, yes, ma'am. Doctor, um, yes. Do I believe that happens? Yes, I do. Like, uh, I, I think there's a lot of evil in the world, absolutely. I think there's a lot of hidden things that go on behind the scenes, and I think that a lot of people are part of networks that we don't even know about. Right. Tell you what, if you have information for me, let's talk afterwards. I, I'm, I'm going to be here, so feel free to, to let me know that. Yeah. Well, I, I just want to get to a couple more questions because I think we're about to I think we're about to wrap it up. So thank you. Thank you. Let's see for coming out. Appreciate it, Dr. Presley. Yes, I'd love to hear your perspective, um, Dr. Albrecht, about what's the benefit and why are our spirits being wanting to be um, diminished? And you mean why do we go for it? No, no. What? Not why we go for it, but why does the system want to do that to us? Well, because the system, you know, we're not battling flesh and blood, but principalities and spiritual powers in the high places or low places, as Garth Brooks would say. <laughs> um, Harlan, I'm wondering if you could let me get on your Wi-Fi. If I just give you my computer, if you could put me on it, because I, I just want to quickly play that. That um, how many people have seen the Verizon uh, where first. the thing wants to get inside of you? Hardly anybody. So yeah, I would like to at least queue it up. So um, and I think we're. Yeah, it's after nine o'clock. So Reed Rothbard is the. I'm oh, sorry. Reed Rothbard. Reed R E A D Rothbard is the wireless pass. All right, let me give you a try. So, um, I, at the risk of having you guys all wear out on me, I do want to thank you very much. I do want to let you go. I want to thank you all for coming out. I will still be here. I'll be happy to continue answering questions for anyone who would like to get the answers to those. And Harlan, let me ask you a question. Uh, whoever Harlan is, uh, if what what normally happens, and I want to try something a little bit different. What normally happens at, the, at these events is everybody claps and everybody files out, and then about fifty people come up, <laughs> and and each one wants to ask a question that they didn't get a chance to ask, and I'm happy to answer it. But what might make more sense, and you guys let me know if this would work, this is like me just creatively coming up with something. It might make more sense for those 50 people to just occupy the seats in this room, and that way the answers can be given to everybody, because I can only answer one question at a time, whether you're all crowded around or sitting here, or, or I'm in a microphone or not. Do so, like a, would you like a chair? Um, like, oh, no, I'm good. I'm good. I would have something to drink. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I would like that. But um, let, me, let me just thank you all for turning out. And what I'd like to do, this is also a new thing I've never done. I'd actually like to end this with a prayer. And I believe I can do that because I'm in Texas. Is that legal here? Right?